In this video, we're driving through at least a dozen mobile home communities in various conditions. You may have heard or seen some type of star rating system or A through F type of grading system used to grade mobile home parks. Using the star rating system, a five star designating a very pretty park that typically wants to remain a five star community, uh, conversely, a one star mobile home park will mostly be of older, rundown homes that is kind of more of a sketchy area or neighborhood. Uh, and these mobile home park owners may want to improve this mobile home park, go from a one star to a two star, three star. The park will be worth more money. They can charge more lot rent. It'll make more money all around better for pretty much everyone. So with that being said, uh, there's not going to be a test at the end of this video. And that's because this star rating system or this letter grade rating system as a way to evaluate mobile home parks is outdated and quite subjective depending on uh, different people's own past experiences. What one person may see as a one-star mobile home park, another person may see as a two-star mobile home park. In this video, you may say that one of my five-star parks is more like a four-star park or vice versa. This star rating system that you may have heard of really doesn't exist. A star rating system or letter grade uh, will not be asked for by your lender, by your realtor, handymen, employees, insurers, etc. However, it can be helpful as a quick memory tool to help distinguish one park from another. As an active mobile home investor, you may likely have different investing criteria for the individual mobile homes uh, depending on these different parks. You can have different entrance strategies, exit strategies, and to-do lists depending on the parks you are going to be planning to invest within. And for those reasons and a few more, we are driving through parks together right now. As an active mobile home investor, I would encourage you to have an open mind driving through these communities. Investing in mobile homes inside of five-star parks can be profitable, as well as one-star mobile home parks. With that said, there are pros and cons, advantages, disadvantages, and traps to watch out for in all of these different types of communities. With that said, I would personally encourage you to be open to most communities uh, that are different sizes in different areas with different restrictions and different, and different star ratings until you do more due diligence on the community, on the opportunity that you're looking at in the individual mobile home. However, of course, if you do learn something about the park that is a deal breaker, by means get out of there you know, and, and, and go to the next one. Now let's hit that road. Uh, stay tuned to the end of this video because we're going to talk about the history of where this star rating system came from and why it still remains uh, vaguely kind of in the mobile home culture today. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting. Before we start driving through mobile home parks and uh, giving them star ratings and looking for good characteristics and negative flaws, let's talk about what this rating system does not grade. This rating system does not grade the profitability of a park, the characteristics or the character of the people inside the community, uh, the potential opportunities or potential growth now or moving forward within this community. This star rating system also doesn't specifically take into account the safety of the community. While some neighborhoods that we go through can look like they're from a horror movie, uh, the location and the area can be quite safe uh, and the surrounding people and neighbors can be quite helpful. This rating system is really not used at all on mobile home parks that have shut down uh, or are no longer operational. I suppose uh, in these situations if there was stars it would be zero stars. This rating system was not originally intended to be used on mobile homes that are located on private streets and attached to their own private land. However, it can be. Because these neighborhoods of mobile homes are attached to little parcels of land uh, that the homeowner also owns, there's no park manager collecting monthly space rent typically. Therefore, there's typically no park office, no community sign at the front of the street. Additionally, each mobile home may have its own mailbox and driveway, or some neighbors may uh, share a community type of mailbox. Now, where should we start? Uh, with five-star parks, with one-star parks, uh, somewhere in the middle? Uh, well, if you said five-star parks, you're in luck. Let's start there at the nicest communities and then kind of work our way down. 
Remember that you may have to go through 30 to 50 mobile home parks locally before you can really start to rate each community. It's important to get sort of a full scope and a, you know, a clear picture of the spectrum uh, from you know, really sketchy mobile home parks that are super run down uh, all the way to you know, five-star five high-end type of mobile home communities. And again, we want to keep an open mind as we're driving through these parks. There's pros and cons and strategies uh, in different parks, and different parks are, can be and usually are looking for different um, ways to be helped by us uh, as individual mobile home investors. A five-star mobile home park will be the nicest. This would be similar to saying that the park and most of the homes in the community would get a letter grade of an A. These mobile home parks are typically well planned and laid out with spacious areas and amenities such as pools, playgrounds, and a clubhouse for residents to enjoy. Uh, keep in mind that these amenities are definitely not needed to be considered a five-star park. However, it does help. Some parks even have tennis courts, boat slips, and golf clubs attached to them. In five-star mobile home parks, you will typically, but not always, notice uh, significant more space between mobile homes versus lower uh, star communities. Some five-star parks may offer most or many mobile homes with two-car garages. More so than any other park classes, five-star parks may require all residents to obtain homeowner's insurance for their mobile homes inside the community. Most of the mobile homes in a five-star community will actually be manufactured homes, since they will be built after 1976. In this video, we will be using the terms mobile homes and manufactured homes interchangeably. A five-star mobile home park may have much newer and modern homes, uh, likely with vinyl siding on the outside or cement board type of siding or a faux brick or stone to make the home look really nice and unique. Uh, all of the home yards will be well maintained. All homes have skirting and are properly kept clean and free of clutter. Yards are mowed regularly and landscaping looks great. In these parks, the management is quick to hand out notices for violation, so any trash, broken down cars, or other eyesores are typically dealt with pretty quickly. In these five-star parks, there may be a higher than normal credit score needed or stricter background check given to potential applicants. If pets are allowed in this community, then all of them are kept indoors and or on leashes when outside. Sometimes you may go through a three-star mobile home park or four-star mobile home park at the beginning only to discover that the back side of the mobile home park uh, is going through an expansion. This means that they're adding you know, 200 spaces, 50 spaces to the mobile home park. They're bringing in brand new homes. They're making all of these new lots. And in, these, in, this, in this new area, the, these new spaces, these new mobile homes, things can look much different. In these areas, uh, of the mobile home park, it can look like a five-star community due to the new homes, the new streets, the new yards, uh, all being brand new. Now, if you ever enter a mobile home park through a gate or a guardhouse, uh, you may be going to a five-star mobile home park. Now keep in mind that I'd say most mobile home parks, most five-star mobile home parks, definitely do not have gates in my experience. But if you do go through a gate, you may be going into a five-star park or maybe just a sketchier area and the, the, the park owner has installed this gate as a way to protect uh, you know, the, the, the residents inside. Now, if you do come to a gate, I would encourage you just to get into that park if needed, maybe to sneak behind someone else driving in through the community or tell the guard if there's a guard there that you're here to meet with the park manager in the community office about uh, homes that are for sale. You obviously need to be there during normal business hours or the guard may not let you in, um, but that would be a way to get into the community, talk with the management, learn more about the park and how you can help. Four-star mobile home parks look similar to five-star mobile home parks. However, four-star mobile home parks are a bit more, um, they have a bit more wear and tear on them. Four-star mobile home parks still have very decent landscaping uh, as the management is still fairly quick to act if residents are violating community rules when it comes to loose dogs, cars parked illegally, uh, a cosmetically damaged uh, mobile home, dirty lawns, etc. Uh, for this reason, four-star mobile home parks are typically very attractive still, desirable, and a safe place to live. 
Keep in mind that all mobile home parks, five-star mobile home parks through one-star mobile home parks, all may have their dangerous elements in them. Um, these dangerous elements that I'm talking about are anything from potholes to dead tree limbs to loose animals uh, to very rude neighbors to possible gang members, drug dealers, etc. Uh, again, these things can happen uh, in any type of community across the country. Uh, however, I will certainly admit that in lower star communities, lower star parks, uh, they are likely to have more of these problems than higher uh, higher star communities that are willing to spend more money or be more strict with their with their rules. Four star mobile home parks also typically have concrete or cement roadways in good condition. This is uh, I was wondering what this big weird entrance is to something and if you look it's the entrance to that house back there. There's a single family home kind of in the mobile home park. If you want to get there you have to drive in through the mobile home park. These parks typically do not have any kind of loose gravel material as the road. Uh, however, if it does, it will be in very level condition and in very good condition. Four-star mobile home parks may have homes that are from the 1980s through the present. However, these homes are kept clean and presentable. Four-star mobile home parks, as well as five-star mobile home parks, may have the very occasional home from the 1980s in the community. However, this older home is going to look amazing for its age. Redone on the outside, redone on the inside, it has great curb appeal. Uh, it's probably not located in the front of the park. Similar to many five-star mobile home parks, uh, these four-star mobile home park communities are filled with all different people from all different walks of life. Some of these people uh, have no intentions of ever selling their mobile home that they're currently living in. Uh, and other people in the park uh, may be going through some issues right now or motivated or maybe motivated in the future to sell. In different areas of the country, the demand from buyers and sellers will vary from area to area. If you have a one-star mobile home park next to a five-star mobile home park, most people are obviously going to gravitate towards the five-star mobile home park if possible. However, even the one-star mobile home park will stay full if the demand for affordable housing is high in the area. When it comes to the approval process, many four-star mobile home parks will demand a higher credit score, uh, income amount, a cleaner background compared to a one-star or two-star type of mobile home park. Please keep in mind that these requirements will vary from park owner to park owner. Now, if you're selling a mobile home, in my experience, a minority of mobile home parks uh, will allow your tenant buyer or your potential buyer, if they're being approved by the mobile home park, if they don't meet the minimum credit score, if they don't meet the minimum income, uh, a minority amount of parks, 30-ish or so percent, will allow a cosigner to step in to allow that, that buyer to still be approved or to allow that buyer to pay a higher than normal deposit so that they can go ahead and still buy your home and move into the community. As an active mobile home investor, it is important to understand the different criteria that each park has for its approval process. While you may not currently own anything in this community now or for some time, it is better to know and have an understanding than be clueless about what the park requires from its residents. Most parks will not want to see any evictions anytime recently. Most parks will not want to see any violent crimes or sex offender crimes at all. When it comes to credit, a park that allows people in with a 550 credit score uh, or higher uh, will be able to approve most of your potential buyers. Now, if you're selling a mobile home and the park allows people that have a 600 credit score and above to move in, but they want to see that 600 uh, credit beacon score as a minimum, uh, you're still not going to get too much pushback. You're going to be able to sell uh, most of your mobile homes in that park with, you know, without getting people denied, really. Um, however, if the mobile home park is requesting a credit score of 650 and above for your tenant buyer to meet, 
for your buyer to meet, you will absolutely notice that a number of your buyers may not get approved. Now this is certainly not a deal breaker if the park requires your potential buyer to have a certain credit score. In most situations, this is not a deal breaker. However, it may be wise to account for the home taking an extra two or three months to sell when you go to resell this home in the future. Also keep in mind that this high credit score is probably keeping the current seller that you bought the home from or the previous seller or when you go to buy a home from a seller in this situation where the credit score of the park needs to be higher than, than normal, but I would say normal would be somewhere around 550 to 600. That's the normal uh, range of where, where parks need to see that their, their buyers come in at. However, a five-star or four-star mobile home park uh, may want to see that credit score up at 650, 675, even 700. I've invested in one senior community, that was a mistake looking back, where the credit score had to be an average of 700 and higher from all the adults living in the mobile home. And again, this was a senior community. Now it was extremely difficult to finally get this home sold uh, to a park approved buyer, but I did. Uh, and to be fair, this was in a bit of a smaller city. Uh, if there was an extremely high demand uh, in the area for uh, nice homes in this senior park, then I would have likely sold the home quicker as there would have been uh, just a bigger population and, and a higher demand. But in this smaller area, there wasn't that much demand. So there was only so many buyers at any one given point, especially the senior buyers. As I remember it, the park was a four or five star community and the application was four pages long. Uh, and I remember each page had to be filled out or the application would be rejected. And most parks, the application process costs 40 to 60 bucks per individual uh, or family. Some parks kind of group it together as a family, but around 40, 60, 40 to 60 dollars per individual. This park that I was just talking about was over $100 per adult per application. And I personally ended up paying for more than a handful of applicants before one was successfully approved uh, after about five months of holding costs of lot rent. Uh, so that's just important to know what the park looks for in its, in its future applicants. Three-star mobile home parks you can consider nice and average. Uh, still very nice though. All of the parks that you go through uh, in a 90 mile radius of your location, this middle section you can consider three-star mobile home parks. Uh, if they look kind of average and in the middle of what you've been seeing, uh, these are about three-star mobile home parks. Many of these parks contain friendly, honest, hardworking, and helpful residents that want nothing more than a safe, quiet place to live and raise their family. Three-star mobile home parks will typically have homes from the 1970s through the present day. These parks likely still have cement or paved roads. However, roads may be made of gravel, uh, shells, loose stones, caliche type of material, or other packed type of material. However, the roads are graded and without too many potholes. Homes look mostly nice and everyone has space in front of their front yards to park uh, one or two cars. Some residents have small gardens in the front of their mobile homes. In three-star mobile home parks, some homes look really nice. And conversely, other homes can look like they haven't been cleaned in a very long while. Or maybe actually vacant. In three-star mobile home parks, you'd have no problem walking around uh, during the daytime or during the nighttime for, for, for that matter. Uh, ideally, all parks that you go through will be well lit, whether they are one-star parks or five-star parks. And if a park is not very well lit at night, then it can be dangerous no matter who's walking through it. Or, yeah, or, you know, just because that can be sketchy. So um, again, this, this rating system really doesn't rate the safety of an area or of a park uh, or of just the crime in the area, which is something that we wanna be concerned with, whether we're buying individual homes in the area or the mobile home park itself. Now we're driving through two-star mobile home parks. And as an investor, as a mobile home investor, a mobile home park investor, you can still own a number of homes and help a good number of buyers and sellers in two-star mobile home communities. 
some two-star mobile home park owners and three-star mobile home park owners for that matter uh, may not have the time the focus or the budget to improve the community and or repair vacant homes to then resell them uh, to increase the park's revenue these these owners may not have the budget or the focus or the ability to be able to fix these homes as quick as they would like to. This is one reason why two-star mobile home parks may have more rundown mobile homes than nicer communities. The issue is a bit of a cycle. Two-star mobile home parks look fairly rundown compared to nicer communities. This means that homeowners that have mobile homes to move to parks typically don't want to move them to these two-star parks and mobile home buyers that are attracted to these parks typically are attracted there because they have little other options and they are denied in most other mobile home parks. Uh, this incentivizes two-star mobile home park owners to consider and accept residents with more flaws in their criminal record and credit record. If that's the people that are coming into the park and getting approved and no one else is, well, they have to make money, they have to fill homes and increase monthly revenue. While there absolutely are many, 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 many good people living within two-star mobile home parks, many of these average residents will not choose to proactively clean up the mobile home park on their own. Uh, you know, all the residents would have to just band together to increase the park from a two-star to a three-star by like cleaning the park, doing a lot of proactive maintenance to the community kind of on their own dime. Now that would be something very, very cool to see. But in most cases, it is up to the park owner and the park manager uh, to sort of steer the ship of where the park is going. This brings up a good point that management and the park owner's decisions on how they want to run the community really go a long way to shape the look and the safety of the park. Is this management strict with enforcing the rules? Does it even have organized rules? Does the management allow anyone with a criminal record to live there or work there in the park? Are the park rules and home standards in force? Do the mobile homes have to be inspected and approved by the management prior to being sold? Are there community activities and events for residents and families? And are new or used mobile homes even being moved into the community? Park managers in two-star mobile home parks may look the other way on certain violations compared to other three-star, four-star, or five-star communities. These two-star mobile home park managers are oftentimes very happy to receive the monthly rents from the residents. You know, asking for certain residents to pressure wash their home or mow their lawn in extra time, uh, that can sort of, you know, wait until next month. This, of course, is a huge generalization. There are mobile home park managers in two-star communities and in one-star communities that are super strict or much less lenient than other managers. In two-star mobile home parks, the grass may be a bit higher than ideal or quite higher than usual. However, this will eventually get cut. Mobile homes may or may not have some type of designated parking areas in these type of parks. You may notice that the spaces between each mobile home are quite narrow compared to four-star and five-star communities. Any playground equipment is likely older, maybe run down in these type of two-star parks. In two-star mobile home parks, you will have no problem walking around during the daytime. However, at night, you might be a little hesitant to walk around. A two-star mobile home park may be a large mobile home park with over a couple hundred homes there, uh, or it may be just uh, simply uh, 10 mobile homes on one dirt road in and out. If the mobile home park has an office, it will typically be a, an older building or another mobile home. Perhaps the park office is the park manager's actual mobile home uh, that they live in within the community. There is definitely nothing wrong with this, however, it is just good to know. In two-star parks, we may find more potholes than we would like. Uh, however, much of the road will definitely still be drivable with no major problems. In these type of communities, there will be more junk lying around, uh, broken cars left in disrepair, fences leaning over, large pools of mystery water you know, laying around, loud music blaring, uh, and loose animals running around compared to four-star parks or five-star communities. In two-star mobile home parks, there are still absolutely good, hardworking, honest, uh, nice, bright, intelligent people living in these types of parks all around the country. 
Like I mentioned before, all mobile home parks can have uh, their bad element to them. Uh, in mobile home parks that are two star or one star mobile home parks, you may see some uh, gang signs that have been spray painted on mobile homes that have yet to be covered up by a park manager or the homeowner, or perhaps the, the gang sign was painted over. It was just done not very well and you can kind of see exactly what the, what the lettering still, still said. Last but certainly not least are one star mobile home parks. Now, one star mobile home parks are definitely without a doubt uh, a lower income type of community. Uh, however, there can still be, it can still be very safe and there can be many hardworking residents that just want a safe and peaceful place to live and raise their families. Uh, again, it definitely is lower income and more kind of dilapidated, but is it safe? You know, on the other hand of being safe, you can be, uh, feel very unsafe or you can be threatened by somebody in the community. If this is the situation or you feel endangered, obviously just turn around and get the heck out of there. Don't even get out of your car. In one-star mobile home parks, you may find dilapidated mobile homes that are leaning over with various holes in them in various locations and conditions. You may see clothes being dried outside, and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. You may see trash lying around or more debris lying around, whereas in other parks it would have been picked up, and in a one-star park it's just kind of left there for uh, quite a while. Some mobile homes may be stripped out or halfway burned to the ground and they're still just kind of standing there. Some mobile homes may look like they haven't been touched in years. You may see the occasional barnyard animal running around as well. In my opinion, these parks still merit a discussion with the park owner or the park management. Perhaps this park knows just how ugly it is and it's trying to improve. Or it's looking for help from an active mobile home investor like yourself. Or perhaps the park was recently purchased and a bunch of the riffraff have just been recently kicked out of the community. Or perhaps the owner uh, doesn't really care at all. They're just waiting for the market to appreciate and to sell to condo developers. Either way, we won't know more until we talk directly with the park owner or the park management to see what type of help that we may be able to provide. Again, if it's dilapidated, then meet with the park manager to learn more. However, if it's unsafe and dangerous, quickly get the heck out of there. Keep in mind that our goals here are to clean homes, fix unwanted properties, help people behind on their lot rent, remove unwanted homes from parks, potentially add more homes to the community as well, broker mobile homes if possible, solve title ownership challenges for the park as well, uh, and the list goes on. And now that you've driven through all these mobile home communities, you have a better understanding of how to rate parks moving forward. I'd like to give a little history lesson behind where this mobile home park rating system came from. The next few minutes I'm going to read directly from a mobile home park website that can be found in the description below. The reference to the star rating system for mobile homes is a holdover from a directory of mobile home parks published in the 50s, 60s, and 70s by Woodall Publishing of Chicago, Illinois. The directory was an outgrowth of the original directory started in 1935 called Travel Trailer Magazine compiled by Carl Dale Dixon. The original directory rated campgrounds and travel trailer parks the forerunner of mobile home parks. As mobile homes grew in size and popularity, potential residents needed a separate directory for the parks that could accommodate them. It became quite an undertaking. The 1970s edition required 21 teams of Woodall inspectors to visit every park in the country. Of the 24,000 parks in existence then, that edition found 13,000 parks deemed of high enough quality to be included in its 950 pages. The ratings were for consumers, the potential residents of the park. The rating guide was never intended as a grade of investment quality. But perhaps the strangest of the facts surrounding the continued use of the STAR system is that Woodall ceased publication of the Mobile Home Park Directory in the early 1970s, and with it, their inspections that created the ratings. They stopped publication because mobile homes became immobile, and the need for rating system for transient homeowners declined. The actual publication of the Mobile Home Park Directory was for 23 years. Woodall continues to publish a directory rating for RVs and campground facilities, as well as a number of subdirectories and regional directories. More information can be found at their website at www.woodalls.com. 
Although the directory hasn't been published for 25 years, the star rating system survives as the authoritative rating system for mobile home parks. Some institutional owners and lenders have developed their own criteria for grading parks, but there is little similarity to the original rating system. The truth is, there is no nationally recognized standard to grade mobile home parks. With that background in mind, now you know that when someone uses the star rating system to describe a park, it is not based on any system or fact. Woodall even stressed that the stars do not denote that one mobile home park is better than the next. It was meant to be a guide for various levels of service, not rank one park above the other. Sort of similar to the diamond ratings that AAA gives to hotels. Thanks so much for sticking to the end of this video. If you have any follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to me at support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. If this was helpful uh, or you liked it, please share it. Please pass it to a friend. Please press that thumbs up button and subscribe. Uh, if you didn't like it, try one of my other videos. You might like that one and, and hit that thumbs up button anyway to uh, show some support. <laughs> feel free to reach out to me, like I said, if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, or you can comment below. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you soon.